Hey guys, Tommy Bryson here, and I remember when I was a kid, there was this movie, and it was called Click, okay? And it was with Adam Sandler, and he had this remote, and with this remote, he could click fast forward into the future in real life, and also click fast backwards into the past and look at the past or whatever and make changes if he actually wanted to. And on top of that, he could also click pause on people, situations, and things just happening overall. And as a teenager, I had a lot of bad ideas with that remote. Honestly, I really did. I was a kid going through puberty. But overall, even today, I still think about that idea. Like if I could go back in the past and learn about money and invest in, what would I have done? that's not just for example go back get the lottery tickets or whatever and then whatever and then boom now I'm a million or whatever okay if I could go back and make some real changes what would those things be and the answer is obviously I wouldn't change anything because everything that happened before made me who I am today and one thing I've learned is that whatever you just get by getting it doesn't really you don't really value it in a sense so this video is less about me going in the past and more about me just telling you for example the mistakes I've made the things I should have done and I didn't do and on top of that the things that I did do and worked out marvelously for example um, when I first started learning about money and investing so in this video I'm gonna give you 10 of these things mistakes things I should have done more of and things that work very well that you can also do and by the way if you're watching this video and you're very early on in your journey of money and investing it's the perfect time because you learn so much by not making the same mistakes as other people. That's one big thing that I learned along my way, okay? Now, the very first thing that I always like ponder is basically, if I could go back, would I have gone to college or would I have just, for example, been like a self-study? The truth is, guys, the way I operate and the way my mind works is basically, I needed to go to college, even though I did not like college whatsoever. And even though 90 to 95% of everything I know right now comes from books, from people, and just basically from living life, okay? I could have done just as well without college. But college did serve, for example, as my spark. I learned about stocks for the first time by accident from a professor that taught me Excel in college. I got my first initial capital. I borrowed money in college from the student loans and I used it for personal business use. And I will deny it in a court of honor because this is just for entertainment purposes. And then thirdly, I also had a job there and I worked. But most importantly though, while being there, because I hated it so much, just honestly, um, it motivated me to do everything in my power to get out of there and be good and not have to rely on getting a job or anything else. So although college did those things for me, if I could go back knowing what I know today as a 17 year old before I went to college, I would have said, you know what? I'm not going to go to college. I'm just going to double down on everything I know and go for it. But obviously, that's because my career was around like YouTube, so I don't need college per se and like education, so I don't need it. But if I wanted to be a lawyer, then then obviously you need to go or like do a trade job or whatever. And I would have been fine, for example, because I could have gotten a job without the college thing, work that job, get capital, keep reading, 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 learning, and then still become the YouTuber I am today, right? So for me, it works out that way, but only if I know what I know today. If I don't know what I know today, I, I'm happy I went to college to figure those things out by accident. And it was very expensive to figure it out, but it was worth it in the end. But I don't recommend you do that if I already told you this, okay? Because this is stupid at that point. Now, the second thing is, guys, more productive reading. Not all reading is smart reading. When I first started learning and I changed my mindsets about the world and how money works and investment works, I got very into self-help books like a lot of us get into. For example, the Robert Kiyosaki's and all of these great authors authors out there and the habits books and that um what is this other book that i read and just like little books here and there you know like all that self-help nonsense but in reality once you read three of those or five of those then you kind of just read them all and it's all about changing your programming and how you view problems in the world but once you answer those questions in your head and you know those things you don't need to read another 30 to 50 self-help books like i did back then i wish i would have just said hey 
I got that, <laughs> okay? Like, I'm done with the self-help stuff. But now let's get to some productive reading on business, on investing, on accounting for um, analysis purposes, okay? Those books would have been a lot harder and also reading and buying my own textbooks because that would have helped me out a lot. But it was a lot harder. It did add a lot more friction and it was gonna take a lot more work. So although I would read those books, I would read them like a book instead of actually studying them, locking them down and making sure I understood it fully and I could teach it fully to somebody else. Today, that's what I try to do. But back then it was just about getting through all this information. I wish I just would have focused on a locked in, for example, into The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham, then I would have read Security Analyst by Benjamin Graham, and then I would have just stuck to, for example, The Richest Man in Babylon. And those three books really condense everything you really need, for example, as far as business and money and investing, but reading a thousand self, well, not a thousand, that's an exaggeration, but reading over 200 plus self-help books and, and just like books overall, you get a lot of garbage in there and not enough quality. And when you find quality, stick to it, lock it down and study it fully. But read more productive books. And then you don't wanna become like one of these like people that you're so positive, you know so much stuff about nothing and you have no results and nothing to show for what you know. And that just sucks, okay? So don't do that. I did that and you don't want that. I don't do that anymore, okay? Now, the third thing is um, barriers to entry. When I first started investing at age 19, I started investing, believe it or not, with $10,000. I think I was 19 or 20 years old, I really can't remember. But I started investing, but I remember, for example, my first investments, that was Walmart, Etsy, um, I invested into a jail, <laughs> and I invested into an obesity pill, by the way, and I made money, okay? I made money, but I was just terrible, and I got very lucky. I will say, like, I got very lucky early on, okay? But overall, I always thought that I needed more money, but if I know what I know now, which is I like to invest into index funds and ETFs, and I, I would have I basically said, let's not wait until we have $10,000 and wait four to six months and just invest once and forget about it and then take the money out and spend it on trash. That's what I did, by the way, true story. I would have just said, I'm going to invest a percentage of my paycheck and send that over there automatically and I would have never stopped doing it. And today, I probably would have had a lot more money. But remember though, back then, it's not like today. Back then, I had to pay a fee for buying a stock. Back then, I didn't know I wanted to invest into like ETFs and index funds because I wanted to be just like Warren Buffett and I wanted to pick companies and so on. And I, and I did that for a while, right? For a very short while. But I realized that long term, I could have just stuck to just index funds and I would have did that from the very beginning and I would have begun to have a lot more money early on. And that $10,000, I would have never taken it out of the stock market, take a quick profit and spend that money on trash. Terrible stuff, okay? I just, I have a lot of terrible stuff to tell you guys, okay? Now, number four is obviously as a young adult, like I was when I first started learning about money and investing, I was in a rush, in a rush to get rich as fast as possible. And if you ask me why, it's because I don't wanna be 65 and be in a job and then be worried about this. But in reality, I was super young and anyone that's like below the age of 50, usually you're gonna have enough time to save enough for retirement and to just have a balanced life overall. And I remember this mindset of mine changed when I read this book called um, You Can't Break Me by David Goggins. And he said in the book, you know, the end of the finish line is death. So what's the point of trying to get to the finish line? Just enjoy the journey and everything that comes with it. So I would have not taken on a lot of risk just in the sake of saying, I gotta do it real quick and real fast. And I, and I, I, know, I lost money in some cases, but I made more money than I lost overall. And I have to say, like a lot of it was just luck. I got very lucky. I, I knew just enough information to be very dangerous. And that's always very stupid because it's like whenever you read just like one book and you're like, I know everything I need to know. No, you know just enough to be dangerous and make some serious mistakes. But I got lucky that those things turned out in my favor and I got a positive return overall. But my point is, don't be in a rush. Take your time, do things step by step the right way, because doing the right thing will always like work out in the end. And not maybe in the short term, but in the end, it does work out. So don't be worried about all these frenzies about, for example, back then for me it was like Tesla 
and worried about like Bitcoin just starting out and all stuff. Like for me, like I was, it was okay for me to be like, okay, I'm not interested in that. But for a lot of folks, they just want to get rich very quickly and they waste their initial capital on that trash. Okay, so be careful doing that. Not a good idea. Now, number five, um, learning from the best, but not trying to become those people. When I first started learning, guys, I told you, okay, I was reading a lot of books, a lot of self-help books, and I also got into investing books and so on, and I was just reading a lot and digesting a lot, and my mentors became Warren Buffett, and a lot of people that were no longer even here or I would never really meet, and I realized that although these people had great information about certain things, I realized that I was trying to become a duplicate of them. So one thing I always say, like if I motivate you or inspire you, that's great stuff, but just take what you need from me, what you like, what works for you, and just leave the rest, okay? You don't wanna become the next Tommy Bryson because I already exist. You wanna become the next you because you are in the process of becoming the best version of yourself. And we need more people that are individuals. And for me, this started to kind of like play a role when I realized that I want to be just like my uncle because he has so much money. He's so good at business. But then I realized he's also an alcoholic at the time. And I was like, well, maybe I don't want to do that. I want to be just like Warren Buffett because he's so good at capital allocation and with investing and with stocks. But I also realized that He's going through a divorce, so maybe something's not right there. And I also wanna be just like my dad. He's so good at making money and just having business and so on. But then I also realized that my dad wasn't there when I was around, so I don't want that for my kids. And my dad, when he passed away, he passed away poor because he was very bad at keeping the money that he basically had. So my point is, whenever it comes about learning or being mentored by somebody, take the good leave the bad that's the whole point if you get mentored by somebody and you take the bad too it's like why are you even there for you know take the good leave the bad and know when to leave a mentorship relationship at one point for sure i learned enough about some people and i walked away because that's what happens once you learn enough you got to walk away and keep growing some mentors the really toxic ones will want to have keep you under them forever and you can get stuck doing that, so be careful. Now, number six is deep work versus the 16-hour day. Now, obviously, I don't want any drama here, but Gary Vee was a big proponent in the idea that longer hours, work harder, work all day, blah, 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 oh my gosh, you know, um, and all this stuff is pretty cool stuff, but it really is just stupid, and let me explain why. You know, when I was a part of a PhD workshop, we had this saying, and I want you to bleep me out here, but it was called work. And what that was was basically busy work. Work that you would do that would take up hours and hours and hours of your time, but at the end of the day, it really didn't do anything whatsoever to actually move the needle. So then once I learned about the deep work philosophy, and that's a book, by the way, Deep Work, and also, for example, the Pareto Principle, the 80-20 rule, I realized that the average human being, <clears throat> most of us, by the way, we cannot lock into a task for more than four hours at a time per day of doing real intensive work. And when you combine that, for example, with the 80-20 rule that shows, for example, 20% of the things you do are gonna give you 80% of the results, it kind of shows you that just by focusing on, on locking into the very important tasks for like four hours a day, it really is enough to do everything else that you basically want to accomplish in reality. So for me, I was spending like, yeah, eight, 12, 16 hour days on making a video, editing it, checking my Gmail, looking for stuff and this and that, right? But in reality, I could have just, for example, hired an editor. I could have just, for example, have them do the thumbnails. And I could have used all that extra time to just do four hours of content creation, which gives me the most results. And I could have done, for example, like three times to four times the amount of work that I could actually do in one day. Now, obviously, you don't need to hire anybody, but it's all about what are the tasks that are gonna give you the most results? Now, read a book called Deep Work. It's a great book, and read the 80-20 rule, which is also a good read, and it shows you that you don't need those 16 to, to like 20 hour days, they're just ridiculous, and you don't need to have a lack of sleep to be the next entrepreneur in the entire world, okay? Now, number seven is all about long-term mentality, and not just with money and investing, but in all the aspects of my life, as far as, for example, health, wealth, love, and happiness. When it came to health, 
I completely neglected it and I paid for it by becoming super overweight. When it came to wealth, well, I doubled down on it, but I took every single opportunity I could. And in reality, not every dollar is worth the work you have to do for it. I would have doubled down on the task that gave me the best results. And that would have been, for example, just sticking to this. And this would have given me the most amount of money. But doing every job out there to earn a few pennies and not understanding that, yeah, I earned a few pennies, but that's time I could have spent on something else to give me even more money. And with love, I made a lot of mistakes romantically, and I also made a lot of mistakes, for example, with my family and spiritually and everything like that. But when it comes to happiness, I neglected a lot of my happiness, always thinking that, well, it's all about delayed gratification. I'll do it later, do it later. And even today, I struggle to know exactly what is it that makes me happy. But for me, it's spending time with my family and sharing what I have with my family. That makes me really happy and with the people I love around me. So whenever I don't have that, I know for sure I'm not gonna be feeling my best in a sense. So when it comes to balancing all of these things, health, wealth, love, and happiness, I would rather get there slower than to get there fast in one aspect and then basically become a failure in all other parts of my life, if that makes sense. I wish I would have done a lot better balancing those things out in the beginning. And by the way, you can be very good to an extreme level, but it's just gonna take a lot of work to also give those other aspects of your life a good amount of time. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna split 24 hours divided by four, and I'm gonna give this and this and this and this to these people. No, it's more like about whenever you have that time with the people you care about or you wanna spend time with yourself or doing whatever, make sure you set that time aside to give time to those things. Like health, it's just like 30 to 45 to an hour every day. When it comes to wealth, that might be like eight hours or four hours a day. When it comes to family and then happiness, all these things, you put them in there. You make them in, you schedule them in, okay? That's the idea. You don't schedule them in, those things don't get done. And a lot of those things for me, they didn't get done because everything was about just more money, more money, and more money. And by the way, I have this extreme cough. <clears throat> and that's why I'm talking like this if you guys didn't know, okay? But we got, we got the work done here. Now, number eight is believing in a lot of rule of thumbs. I always wanted to have some quick answer, to have some formula, to have some like exact way of doing things. And that's not how this money game works. Like a lot of it is just, for example, you kind of learn as much as you can to avoid a lot of dumb mistakes. But along the way, you're gonna learn by doing and by learning and understanding that knowledge. Everyone wants quick answers. And I see this a lot, for example, with investing information. What stock do I invest into? No one asks about how do I learn how to invest into a stock? No, people just want, for example, the exact way. Well, not the exact way, the exact stock to invest into because the actual process is a lot harder. So one thing I learned is if you're not willing to put in the work, then don't expect those results. So as far as, for example, trying to find these rule of thumbs and these like little formulas or whatever, I kind of would have given up on those things and just focused on learning and learning and having a full understanding and developing my own rules that fit me and my lifestyle in a way. And my strategy and my goals. <coughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. And my goals. All right, we're at number nine. We're almost there. Now, number nine is going to seem a little morbid. That means kind of messed up in a sense, but it's very true. Um, I would have spent a lot less time trying to help people. In reality, you can't help anyone unless they really want to help themselves at first. And what I learned is basically, I always wanted to have those characteristics that my mom had, you know, the passive, the loving, the caring. And I always wanted to say like, well, if I know something that's gonna help you, here it is, here it is, here it is. But in reality, if someone's not ready to learn something, or they just plainfully just don't care or don't want to, then in reality, you pushing it onto them is going is not really gonna make a difference in their life. And in reality, it might ruin your relationship. So for me personally, <clears throat> I would have stuck to giving the information to the people that actually wanted it. And before giving advice, I would have asked, for example, do you want some advice on this, okay? Because that would have saved me a lot of time and also maybe a few friendships, okay? But those friendships would have still deteriorated because we just weren't on the same page anymore. But my point is, if you know something that has helped you out a lot, in my scenario, like money and wealth and all this stuff and investing, and you want to share it with a friend and they're not into it, then you kind of just like, keep growing and growing and growing. And when they're ready, you say, hey, whenever you're ready, you let me know and I'll be here. But just trying to critique someone or shape them into something that you want them to be or whatever, 
doesn't work like that. People are people. People are not Plato, okay? And that's something I needed to learn back then, and that would have saved me a lot of time, okay? <clears throat> Number 10, and the last one here, is um, double down on what works and let go what doesn't work. And that's not just on money and investing, but that's on life. If something is giving you great results, double down on it. If something's not giving you great results and it's not working out for you, then in reality, you might have to let it go. Now, you have to be very smart and perspective. It's not perspective is what I'm looking for, but you have to be very smart in a way where you know, for example, that you're just not giving up, but you know you've reached a point when it's time to just let go of that scenario. Like if you failed at the same thing and it's your 15th time and you saw this movie about the guy guessing the 16th time, well, maybe you could have spent that energy on something that you're actually a lot good at. You know, there was this great book <clears throat> about management by Peter Drucker, I think it was. And it talks about, for example, how the best thing you can do is to double down on your strengths instead of trying to, for example, fortify your weaknesses. Because it makes no sense. If you're very good at one thing, double down on that thing and get it to the best, highest level possible. Because even if you double down on your weaknesses, you're still going to be somewhat okay at them but in a way mediocre compared to what you could do with your strengths. And the things you need to let go, it's better to let go of them, okay? Not just with money and investing, but also with life. And also with investments, because there are certain stocks I should have let go a long time ago, took my loss right there, cut it off, and I would have been a lot better off today. But there you go. <clears throat> That's the idea. Those are 10 things that I wish I knew very early on. Now, comment down below, click, so I know that you are a real person and that your comment is legit and it's not by a bot. Again, that is click, C-L-I-C-K, so I know you're a real person. And comment down below your question, your comment, your idea, and what are some other things that you wish you knew when you were learning about whatever it is that you were going through, okay? So comment down below, let me know. I'll be in the comments and I'll answer all the comments like I always do. And thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified. Um, and here is another video. Here's my face, click subscribe. And as always, long-term team, officially out. <clears throat>